For many years, Cheddarton Park Sports Club has been a big part of the town's community, offering people of all ages a chance to get involved with sport, no matter their age, ability or gender. Its unique sense of inclusiveness has helped Cheddarton Park become the largest community sports club in Greater Manchester, with over 80 teams and a 1,000 individuals from around the area. In its 40 years, the club has branched off from its humble beginning of junior football into netball, disability football, adult football and various charity projects, just to name a few. But Cherry Park haven't always been the well-established club they are today. In 1979, the club was founded by the late Jack Halliwell after he came across a group of boys playing football in the streets and offered to coach them. Although funds were short, he soon realised he had enough lads to start a football team and along with the help of Cheddar and local Roy Kelly, Cheddar and Park Juniors was founded. This is a bit um, strange really. Uh, the, the chap who formed Cheddar and Park was not, unfortunately he's not here now, he's called Jack, he was called Jack Halliwell. Very well known within the, the junior section of uh, football within the area. And it was a chance meeting, everybody knows him around here, and it was a chance meeting at, um, outside Chatterton, Asda, in the doorway. And I think it was beginning of August, so we had the usual chat, how are you? Uh, Will you do me a favour, Roy? Would you, uh, I've got to form this football team, and he said that they've got a friendly match in a fortnight. Would you look after them for me? And uh, I said, well, what are they called? I said, I don't know, I haven't got a name. Well, they all come from the area. Yeah, I said, well, let's call them Chatham Park Juniors. Yeah. They were juniors then because it was 10, 11 year old, 9, 10, 11. Yeah, OK, well, what about a strip? We haven't got a strip. Yeah. I've got one in the loft. So we go down to his house and he comes out to the loft about 20 minutes later with his green shirts and uh, black shorts. He said, well, of these green, we, he's already decided then, we, we've got a strip now and it's green. And there's no other club in the country apart from Norwich while playing green. So we don't need a second strip when we're playing away and they've got contrasting colours, do we? So that was it. I was hooked into it. I think Jack's started it up because there was quite a few lads that were knocking around the streets, nothing to do, so he started this <coughs> team up to play football. All uh, local lads, weren't we? Yeah, all, yeah. all lived in the, in the area. Pretty and, much went to the same school and stuff. So. Yeah, and what he did was got them together, started playing football, and... It, well, it was more of a laugh, weren't it? It was, it was just to get you off the street, give you something to, to do, something to achieve. Um, played every Sunday and needless to say I don't think we finished the match in, in single figures it was always 10-0, 12-0, 14-0 something like that because they just no experience Although their first season was littered with poor performances on the pitch Jack and Roy managed to lead the team into a respected finish in the league and even into a cup final in their second year And then I think the second season we sort of realised that we yeah, we've got to the final. I think we, I think we, we finished can, pretty you know, high up in the league and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We've got some decent players, yeah. or we had some decent players. 78 minutes of a no score, and this lad went and scored the one goal, yeah. and it just blew us apart. So I went into the dressing room, which was just a container, really, and it was so sad to see 11 kids crying their eyes out. And you, as a not as adults, but as a manager of the team, whatever, you've got to go in and try and console these 11 kids. And it was, it was hard work. But they, they come round and they finish up on the Sportsman's Trophy and one or two other trophies yeah. uh, because they were just a, a sporting team. And that, that was it. When they got to the teenager, we dropped the juniors. And then became, it was just Chatterton Park Football Club. And that's how, it, uh, that's how it all began. Then uh, it just went on from there. After two years, the one team became two. Three or four years later, it became three teams and then four teams. Then it's, it just went on from there. As the original boys began to grow older and new lads started coming into the team, 
Cherry Park began to grow steadily over the next few years, but no one could have predicted the rapid growth of the squad into the behemoth it is today. Um, when I first got involved with the club uh, in 2004, we had about 10 teams. We didn't have any girls teams. There were some age groups that didn't even have a team at all. We didn't have any uh, pitches and we didn't even have chat and fold in, the, in them days. Um, I, we were still a well-respected club, but we had about 10 teams. Um, so where we are now, 15 you know, sort of years later, with 90 plus teams, we took over a cricket pitch at, uh, which was St Matthews at Chadderton Fold, built our own changing rooms, got the pitch relayed, introduced uh, netball, girls football, uh, rounders, uh, vets football, the walking group. It's just phenomenal where we've come in a short period of time. It gives them you know, good morals, good values, it's about having a laugh, it's not about win at all costs. As, as a coach, uh, running a team is uh, immensely rewarding. Um, you know, you're like a father figure to some of the children. They look up to you. You you, you have standards. Um, it's just a, a, it's very rewarding seeing them children grow up from six year old up to eighteen and nineteen, and turn into you know fine young gentlemen basically. And they do look up to you as if you're you know a second dad. Uh, and it, it is nice to see that uh, what you've been trying to teach them in in morals and standards, not just about winning, but winning in the right way. Uh, pays off as the children grow up. I, I get so much enjoyment about um, watching my lads play week after week. Um, these uh, we're under 19s now, and um, to see lads having fun, having a laugh, um, going for a beer afterwards, you know, socialising, and and it, it just brings that 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 ethos of you know we're, we're all in it together. Um, so we can all, all muck in and we can get you know, the right result, uh, win, lose or draw. Do you know, it, it's such nice to see so many happy faces running around on a football pitch and that people are turning to real good friends, which hopefully we're friends for life. The club has evolved immensely over the past decade, focusing on the community spirit around it and looking at improving people's lives from all across the country with its diverse and sometimes even groundbreaking projects it has run. Chenton Park is more than just a football club. The working group is set, was set up um, in conjunction with mine to help with mental health and well-being within the area. Which is a valuable resource for, 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 for many people who, again, may be suffering with um, anxiety issues, depression, um, vulnerable who are on their own, who just want to come down and have a walk and, and, and meet nice people. We have a wide range of people, um, from children of the age of six up to people in the 70s. Some of them are recovering from illness um, where they've been immobile for a little while so they come to uh, do some light recovery and we've seen those people move on to um, to the gym after, after being with us or possibly going out and doing park runs and then on the other aspect we've got people who just come for the social side and um, they go off in their own little groups and go to the pictures with, with each other and meet up outside steppers and then we've got a number of people from Slimming World who um, and Weight Watchers type weight loss groups and they come to um, just to keep keep fit and generally active to help with their weight loss goals. Well, it's not just about a one come down on a Sunday and we'll go for a walk. Friendships have grown from that, you know, so people know each other personally now, which is absolutely amazing, where before that, nothing like that would have happened. Well, the cerebral palsy football is uh, something that we was uh, groundbreaking on. We wanted to set up some form of disability football, wasn't quite sure what to do. Uh, we worked with um, Oldham Sports Development who recommended that uh, cerebral palsy was the way to go because there was no facilities anywhere in the country really for cerebral palsy football. So we said, right, let's do that. So we, we set it up with CP Sport England and uh, Manchester FA Oldham Sports Development. Craig Simpson and myself did a lot of research on what was necessary. So we didn't really want to repeat what other clubs were doing. So we started the first cerebral palsy football club in the northwest, well, the north of England really, and people came from all over, and it was a tremendous success, and I'm glad to see that it's still going today. And again, that was another part of being, Chatterton Park, being in the community, and it was important that as a community charter football club, we were seen to be doing these things as well. But not only seen to be doing it, we were doing it for the right reasons and involving as many people as possible. You've got children of all ages, all disabilities, all levels, uh, 
are just playing football, they love playing football. Some are in frames, some aren't in frames. It's just so rewarding seeing them, they're building up confidence and friendships. I like Caddy Park because they teach me how to run fast and kick double. And through our cerebral palsy football, we've found that some parents who were coming to us have set up their own teams in their own uh, venues like Stoke, for example, and they've created their own cerebral palsy football teams and then they've encouraged other teams. So there's a bit of a network now throughout the country where through us really that uh, there's plenty of teams out there now doing cerebral palsy football. So it's, uh, it's for the really young children who are just starting out in their journey into football uh, and it's really just uh, creating games and fun for them, uh, giving them the experience of kicking a ball about, um, making new friends, just enjoying them themselves, making them fall in love with the game of football. From my own experience I've I've learned a lot from playing football here, even from the under fives level. Um, it was a good chance to socialise and that developed me personally. I gained a lot more confidence and obviously I gained the football ability to keep playing through the years and I've loved every minute of it, to be honest. Uh, we're on about creating an all-round great kid. So it's more than just playing football for us. Uh, obviously we want them to, to develop and get a little bit better, but that's only a small part of it. We want them to come here, make friends, uh, learn how to make decisions, problem solve, uh, understand rules, so what size of the pitch they're playing on and the boundaries they can play in, with the view and the ultimate end of creating a great little child. To me, it obviously fills me with pride, and just to see them develop and socialise is a great, great honour, really. Uh, well, we're lucky we've got some uh, young coaches, and I mean, I don't think an age uh, is anything in terms of where you are as a coach, because the two the young coaches we've got are absolutely brilliant. Uh, they understand the philosophy of the club. They create fun, uh, they, they have a laugh with the, the kids, they, they make coming to our playgroup sessions really exciting. It's all about creating that environment of fun. Uh, and the young coaches we've got certainly do that in bucketfuls. It was started off as two teams and over the past five years we've grown into 13 girls teams. We've been running for like five years now and um, we've developed the club so that we now um, we've got new girls coming all the time. We started the club originally because it was a hole in Chatterton and um, there was nowhere for the girls to train other than the uh, elite club that are in, in within the Oldham area. So um, I started the children at school and we started playing league games and then the club approached me and said, um, would you like to add netball as one of our sports from the club? So it went on from there and we grew and um, as I teach at one of the schools, I was able to get some of the girls to come and join and, and it's grown from there. It's grown my confidence because um, I got told that I was too small. So then when I came here, they was like, they were like dead kind and you know supportive when I was just not confident about the shooting but then it got better because of the support from the other girls and the coaches. Such an inclusive club, everybody gets an opportunity um, no matter what the ability we are, we give every girl a chance so, um, so I think it's a great social event for a lot of the girls, the girls are really good friends as well and they're, they're, getting, they're, going, they're getting older together within the teams and they're getting better and better in the teams as well so it's it's a really nice environment. Often they leave primary school, sport sometimes stops there for a lot of these teenage girls. So for me, if I can get them involved at a young age and keep them interested, keep them involved in a team, I think it's another outlet. It teaches discipline, um, you know, it's keeping them fit, um, it's making new friends, it's learning new things, so it's definitely benefiting the girls, or they might not say that. Chatterton Park Sports Club is something which really is, it just really, illustrates how great grassroots football is. The growth of the club, certainly since I've been chief executive and seen everybody who's worked so hard to provide not just a football club, but to provide a sports club, to provide those many opportunities for local community, whether you're a player or equally a volunteer. Um, you know, it's just a fantastic club to be, to be involved in. We're a community-based club um, and we try to embrace uh, every part of the local area to, to embrace what, what we try to achieve down at Chelly Park in relation to charity work that we do. We've 
uh, decided to encourage more people within the community to get involved in the club. We run a, um, a shelter, uh, put the homeless shelter for the rough sleepers every fifth uh, Saturday of the month, uh, 11 while 3 o'clock in the morning, um, where we provide food, um, communication, um, clothes, people come there to have showers, clean clothes, um, bedding, quilts. Uh, whatever, um, and we, we're very good at what we do at Cheltenham Park. We are, we try to be as diverse as possible can and help as many vulnerable people as we possibly can. We've done um, numerous egg collections now for the homeless and the hospitals and the food bank. So we identify people in our local area who need our help um, and we, we try to do collections to help them in, in ways that give them a little bit of something extra that they wouldn't have had. It makes me very proud to be part of such a, a, a great a great club with great morals and great values that as, as a club we try to um, give back to the community um, as much as we possibly can uh, and we can only get bigger and bigger and bigger but it gives it gives us all a sense of pride that the, the, the what, what we try to do is, is is actually working and we're actually having impacts on many people's lives in the in the in the older area who who are vulnerable it's just amazing it's, it's an amazing achievement that um couldn't be done without everybody pulling together within the club at 40 years old the club is growing stronger and stronger and shows no signs of slowing down the work the volunteers put into this club are the reason it's so successful and are able to help as many people as it does. From its humble beginnings of coaching a few boys, who knew that the club would grow and branch out to reach as many people as it does now? Happy birthday, Cheddar Park.